barbarians, torturers, officers, lend us your steals. <laughs> Welcome back to the Brothers Gwyn channel. Today we are very excited to be doing a review for The, the Blade, Blade itself. itself by Joe Abercrombie, the Lord Grimdark himself. Ed read The Blade Itself and all of Joe Abercrombie's works other than the Shattered Sea trilogy last year, I believe, and you've yep. been rereading them gradually this year. It's and so kind of an obsession. Yeah, It's a All lifestyle, it's not a phase. <laughs> it's not a phase. And this month I've dived into his works as well. Did you delve into it? Though? I delved and dived and burrowed into his <laughs> That's works. That's a new one. That is new. But That's now new. I think so. Today we'll be talking about our honest thoughts on the bullet itself, the strengths, weaknesses. Or if honest. If there are any. Yeah. Oh, being honest, that's not really one of my strengths, strengths is I hate it? That. <laughs> But we'll get straight into it. We'll follow the usual structure that we have for these. Hope that you like it. So we'll start yeah, with gush the... and gush <laughs> and gush. But hold oh, no, on, that spoilers then. Do it the same. But, but better. better. But okay, I will start by reading an author overview of Jabba Crombie. Jabba Crombie was educated at Lancaster Royal Grammar School and Manchester University, where he studied psychology. He moved into television production before taking up a career as a freelance film editor. During a break between jobs, he began writing The Blade itself in 2002, completing it in 2004. It was published by Golance in 2006 and was followed by two other books in the First Lord trilogy. Before they are hanged and Last Argument of Kings. He currently lives and works in London with his wife and daughter. So after this, Joe Abercrombie also wrote a few standalones in the First Law world, and he's currently writing the Age of Madness trilogy, the final of which will be released in September. So then I'll just quickly read off the blurb for The Blade itself. I'm sure many of us have read this, um, but it doesn't hurt, does it? So and a few won't have. Exactly. Jezel Dan Luther, paragon of selfishness, has nothing more dangerous in mind than winning glory in the fencing circle. But war is brewing and on the battlefields of the frozen north they fight by altogether bloodier rules. Inquisitor Glockta, a cripple turned torturer, would like nothing better than to see Jezel come home in a box. But then he hates everyone. Cutting treason out of the heart of the Union one confession at a time leaves little room for friendships and his latest trail of corpses could lead straight to the rotten heart of the government if he can just stay alive long enough to follow it. So the blade itself then, that gives you a little bit of a taste of for what is to come. Lo knowing a little bit about the blurb uh, and also by the author, Lord Grimdark, Mr. Abercrombie himself. So um, it is a fantasy book with multi POV. It's kind of, would you say it's epic fantasy? Probably not overall, is it? But it's got yeah. it's got an ep epic factor. Yeah, yeah, it's totally epic. Um, <laughs> I'm never doing that again. Um, so yeah, it, it it can veer into that territory. Um, but yes, there's, there's three central POV characters uh, and there's a smattering of other side characters mm. on the side. Um, and I also want to say that obviously the blade itself is meant to be instrumental in the formation of like the subgenre of grimdark, isn't mm. it? That uh, you have Game of Thrones and then you have this alongside uh, Scott Lynch's The Lies of Loch Lamora. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. Um, and they're both meant to be the precedents for what Grimdark has become. So the book itself has got quite an trend setters and changing yeah. the genre. And, exactly. Um, it's interesting to see where the genre is going now. But yeah, so the blade itself. No wonder this started a whole other kind of subgenre <laughs> um, because it is fantastic. Thank Spoiler. you for thank you for watching our review, <laughs> uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Truth and courage. Um, but yeah, so let's go into the characters then. Something mm -hmm. that we think is our favourite, um, yeah. uh, the most important kind of aspect of books that we read to us. So William, yeah. let's go over to you. So I think anyone who's read any Joe Crombie or heard a lot of talk about Joe Crombie knows that he is praised probably the most for his characters, how mm. iconic and also just how unique they are. Mm. And we'll talk about each one as we go through. You've got the three main perspectives that it talks about in the blurb, but you also have an array of others and also the side characters are wonderfully fleshed out yes. as well. Yeah. I think something we've talked about quite a bit, Ed, is that Joe Crombie, he seems like he loves to take a trope and then subvert it. Mm. So. Everything that you expect is going to happen. Oh, this character is that person. This is that one. And then he makes it different. So, for example, you've got the the big, brutal, imposing warrior, but he's the most philosophical of the lot. Uh, yeah. You've got the, the young, dashing officer who's on his, his rise um, to power, and mm. then he's totally... Out of his depth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you have Glockter, who is a torturer. 
um, who has been tortured. So the reason he knows so much about torturing and what's best is because he, it's all been done to him. Uh, but it feels like you're reading a Tarantino film with how quirky and individual the characters are, how they all feel so unique straight just from the word go. Um, and they all play into each other, they all meet each other throughout the book and then they veer off in their own directions. Yeah. It's oh, not, the interactions. It's not all, yeah, exactly. And you fantastic. have some interactions that are just so perfectly written. Joe Abercrombie, his main strength, I would say, is definitely his characters mm. and how they're all awful people <laughs> they're all awful like i said the torturer but you just cannot help but love them you cannot help but feel uh, emotionally engaged in their storylines in them as people and you actually want them to succeed yeah. because i think that uh, what they're going up against is even worse than them so yeah um, well i think what it is talking about what makes them feel so lifelike is mm. they have major flaws character but, defects which yeah. probably more than most people in the real world but still because they have those flaws and those defects that it it makes them lifelike and then Joe Abercrombie also adds additional layers that make us feel sympathy for them mm. they aren't just oh terrible people he's a torture been tortured he feels bitter and it's there's not, a lot they're more not, to it you know they don't do bad things for the sake of it they're no not, all of their motivations lead in and it feels so realistic and authentic and I yeah think that's something that I really take away from Abercrombie's writing that everything feels so realism from mm. the realistic sorry from the uh, you know from the meticulous planning of the of the battles and the campaigns and you know and all the whole plot as well and we mentioned uh, just a few seconds ago about interactions of characters and I want to say that these characters they are hilarious in the way that they deal with problems they are all put out of their depth mm. at some point in the story aren't they but whilst there is the humor of that there's also the severity and also alongside that, I think that Joe Abercrombie really does a good job at having heartwarming and emotional moments as well. There's a scene between one of our perspectives, West, and another Glockter. And I won't say what it is because it's a spoiler-free review, but the dynamic of that scene and the huge array of emotions and how their conversation progresses is... It's one of the best scenes of this book, and it's just a conversation between two people. And it was, and because you understand each of them and how they both view the situation so differently, it was just really masterfully done. And we also have characters like Pharaoh who hates everyone, but for good reasons, basically. So funny. And that she is she is horrible to people, but you have so much sympathy for her because of her context as mm. a character. And I think that Joe Crumby hits that fine line of making people so fully fleshed but making them bad people because it's the genre of grimdark but also people who you're rooting for and when yeah. he hurts them it hurts me so he really yeah. did a great job there yeah everyone's motivations are clear as crystal and it's just uh, you know all of the characters are fully fleshed out yeah it's down to a t you know you know exactly all of the different quirks from the characters if i turned to a page and i read a line of dialogue stuff like that you, I'll, you'd be able to know who exactly yeah. who it was even if it's a character you've only known for a page you know Jabba Crombie has a way of getting into the head of a character or seeing what character is like from another perspective and really knowing exactly who they are actually as a person uh, but they also have times to surprise you as well which yeah. is which is you know which I love reading you realistic never know what's well. going to happen and it's very realistic you have to be realistic yeah. about these things <laughs> and I think actually just reading the author overview has just made me think that maybe what has lended to this realism of the characters is that Joe Abercrombie did study psychology at university mm. so actually, there we go that's yeah, our... not torturing at university yeah yeah not I hope not, anyway. If you, what Joe Crumby did that we don't know about, well, he did say that he puts part of himself in all of his characters, so... Yeah. Worrying, to say yeah. the least. So, but now, moving on to plot, then. Now, people usually say the blade itself is kind of thin on the plot ground. Um, I don't mind that at all, because the writing is so good, um, and the characters are amazing, and it feels like it is kicking everything off for the mm. next book and the third book as well, um, because it is a trilogy... Enough happens here to keep me completely engaged and invested. Yeah. I never at one point think, oh, this is getting really dull or boring yeah. or bogged down at all. I think Jabba Crombie put on his website, I'm not too sure when, but he, he was reading back through his books and he was giving his um, his honest thoughts on them. And he was saying how um, the blade itself, he, he would would like to edit it and, you know, ramp up the plot factor, um, which is quite funny. Yeah, I agree that because the characters are so wonderful and that is the main focus of the blade itself, that... It is somewhat to the deprivation to the plot, but exactly as you said, that it does not matter 
because it's a character driven story and there is still plot there and it's the character development which you could call plot in itself it's just the wider arc the blade itself ends where you can see that the plot is just going to kick off in before they're hanged can't yeah you? yeah that it, there but are it, so many mysteries and the plot progression there's just you know so many different layers oh to, yeah to the plot as well uh, and it ties in largely with the history of the world yeah yeah exactly i think that the plot a lot of it is that it opens everything up but not much is solved in the blade mm, yeah, itself yeah it's more so that's why it is so engaging with, without perhaps and then it has those character progression. interactions where you've exactly. been throughout in di various positions and yeah. you know this you don't care about the plot, really <laughs> exactly you can see what's going to happen and to be honest it was written in 2008 it feels going back to the word trope it feels like you know what the story is going to be and it's and because you feel like you know at the end what what they're going to get out of yeah, this yeah. book the little group then you don't then you kind of you already know it don't you yeah, so you, you're you focusing kind of more know on the characters and yeah. just it relishing in all of their interactions each thing they do every fight logan has every torturing session glopter does and uh, every moment of stupidity and um just gitness <laughs> that Jezel has <laughs> exactly and uh, I think that's enough to say about the plot isn't it that it, I thought it was still great but it's just not the main focus and if you're someone who I don't think there's many people who are but if you're all about the plot then I think you'll still love it but yeah. just be wary that it's not all about the plot yeah and now on, on to, to the pros pros now the one question I ask is how is this a debut it feels as if there's no fat we will at never all. be right <laughs> no you read this it's like oh I'm right. never right this good. Um, so I might as well give up. So yeah, the pros, I think that we talked about how how is this a debut because mm. it is so fluid and organic but being very lean as well, isn't it? That there's Everything is very relevant to the progression of the story for characters or plot or any of the other aspects. Yeah, the world adds, building. adds a detail which just amplifies yeah. your enjoyment a hundredfold, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you go so on. thank you. Go on, I go think ahead, that blondie. the <laughs> you blonde. We're both blondies now. I keep um, forgetting that. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Um, want to be Jezel. <laughs> read the blade itself and want to be Jezel. I don't think many people come away thinking that, do they? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but as I was saying, I think that the prose is one of the key components towards the characters being as great as they are, because mm. with each perspective. Jabba Crombie imposes a different vernacular that really suits how this character talks and it's about their own psychology, the language they use. I think you're talking about like, the speci specific verbs they use to describe things. And the yeah, Jabba Crombie is feel. going into a little bit of like nerdy stuff about how he actually writes. It's, it's, it's perfect the way he uses, similar to Comet McCarthy, he uses these active verbs that you don't really associate with humans. Um, for did their different actions so whether it's you know logan uh, the barbarian will have a different set of le kind of lexus around um his character that would be different to someone maybe living in a city who's you know um quite wealthy and mm. they, they have different interests you know logan can talk very philosophically about you know life and death and and people he's known he's got all these different advice and then you've got Jezel who's always thinking about the women and the money and poker and he's analyzing people thinking how he's better than them and then you've yeah. got Glockto who's kind of a mix of both of them isn't he he and used to just, be Jezel he's and jaded the, yeah. and just bitter. you know very bitter and twisted in a very sour way uh, about everyone so and they've all got their own sayings all have a turn of phrase and I think I saw that uh Jab Crombie was talking about how he writes characters and he said he, he does love to change it for each character like you have Pharaoh and he has a short paragraph then he has a punchline a short paragraph and then a punchline and then another short paragraph and then you have one of her sayings that she will be known for so you know he kind of has those repetitions throughout which never get dull whatsoever yeah. um, and it's always so interesting to read and usually when I when I read books I kind of write down you know whether a, a turn of phrase in the book or a sentence but I find with Abercrombie I write out whole paragraphs which I just think this is amazing and it's actually inspiring you know this yeah exactly something you can maybe pillage on one day but also think it's just written so perfectly and mm. like we said earlier 
It's a bloody debut. What's yeah, that like, about? Crazy. And I think also something else I was struck by is that while the while the pros is such a variety, it's mm. always very accessible, isn't it? Mm. This is something that I think we've mentioned it a few times on the channel. Yeah. You read a quote where someone said that it, it's easy to write a book that only you understand and incredibly hard to write something that everyone understands. Yeah. And Joe Crombie's done that here. You understand everything that's going on. The things that you don't know, you're not meant to know. And it lends towards the suspense and the tension and the character development as well. So I think... <laughs> I think we're just saying too many positive things, Ed. Yeah, I mean, with the pros, I don't really find there is a negative. I, th no. I love how different each of the uh, point of views are. I love how he has dialogue and he has... Um, what he does really well, is, again, is Glockter, his internal thoughts are... Uh, in inver inverted italics, in, sorry, italics, no, inverted. Yeah. or in italics. I don't know why I said that. inverted. Inverted, whatever. Upside um, down. Yeah, English teacher, and um, so yeah, his thoughts are in italics because everything he thinks he really cannot say out loud because he's in much more of a politically driven <laughs> world. But Logan doesn't have those thoughts um, in italics. He has a thought, and then he actually has more speech, doesn't he? he has, yeah, yeah, he does. He, he talks more about what he's actually thinking, whereas Glockter might have a oh. whole paragraph saying how he hates this person, how snivelling they are, and how they're like a little snake, and then his line of speech after that would be like, yes, sir. It's you the know, juxtaposition so like, of the exactly. two. With Glockter, yeah. there's so much humour, mm. but underneath that, there's the current of how bitter he is that he can't be himself, we basically. We have the humour. I'm always like, it's really dark black humour, the, I've I'm never, I don't think I've ever laughed so much, so much at, a at a book. No, I listened to them and I've read them out loud now, and they're equally as funny. They're they're so good, and I think um, the way I get invested in characters anyway, which you know, is through humour straight away. We've all got a sense of humour. I like to think I could be funny sometimes, probably not, mm. but. I love it when a character has, you know, this very British humour as well, I think. It feels yeah. like I'm watching a little bit of Blackadder when I read Glockter, <laughs> yeah. which is oh no bad word, yes. thing. Yeah, he yeah. is Blackadder. Blackadder in, in Blackadder 2, the Tudor the one. Best yeah, one. The best one. The best one. Yeah. So there we go. That's an, enough about the prose, I think. Basically, mm. it's fantastic. And yeah. it's the prose that allows for such a variety of emotions to come through. Yes. And the next we'll talk about, moving on to the next segment of this review, is the world. So I think... We mentioned earlier about tropes, and I think that the world in the blade itself, again, because the plot isn't the priority, we get a lot of world building, mm -hmm. but it's not so heavy on that as of yet. Yeah. You basically got you've got three different parts of the main continent. There are different um, continents. There's Styria. There's not the actually a map. No, there is no. I remember Joe Crombie saying, "Well, when do they ever have a, an accurate map?" Yeah. So why should I, why should I give the reader one? Yeah, well, yeah, it wants people to focus on the characters rather than exactly. where they are and yeah, and stuff. you know roughly. Okay, so there's Gurkle in the south. Yeah, you've got the Northmen. <laughs> in the up north, north. <laughs> Angland is somewhere up there as well. Yeah, and you've got yeah. the Union, who's it's basically a massive empire, the dominant power. Yeah. Um, focus in the centre, but it's a bit of a facade. The empire is actually basically internally crumbling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's still putting out that imposing figure of itself trying to scare away its enemies basically mm -hmm. but i think that everyone else is seeing through the cracks and so in the blade itself they see a threat from the north as well as threats from the south as well so and the crumbling of the roman empire exactly that's what, that's what it feels and if i just talk about the historical kind of feel that i get i think the northmen are kind of inspired by Vikings slash maybe Saxons with that land character. They have thralls and they have carls, don't they? Yeah, yeah, the language. Um, exactly. Yeah, you know, well, the language they call, they use as well, of course. But, you know, their weaponry as well and their, their ring mail. They don't have plate, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Whereas the Union feels a little bit like the British force in Crimea without the guns, I would say. I'd say with their breastplates yeah. and their red... Um, sorry, their red jackets and you know all this kind yeah, of stuff yeah. they're very smart officers which resemble you know the, the when you look, think of the cavalry in world war one yeah. that kind of that kind of thing but also they have their sabers mm. and the steels as well um i think later on is a bit more of a medieval influence in some yeah. of the areas but you know they use pikes so maybe the english civil war kind of re references yeah, yeah, there as well you, but mean. i definitely think the way they dress and also the political systems within within and Ex the, exactly the word union as well so yeah. it kind of makes me think of that you know, um, 19th century 
red coat era. Yeah, exactly. I, I was going to say, talking a bit about the culture, the political systems. Mm. In the North, you're promoted by merit, basically. It's do or die. Deeds on the battlefield, songs, exactly. and, you know, the, the, it is survival of the fittest. But then in the Union, it's all about what have you inherited? What is your reputation <clears throat> as a family? You can't rise beyond your class, basically. Yeah. It's very rigid. And I think that's where we can see it's a bit more inspired yeah. by British history. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's really great how Joe Crombie has mixed these cultures because a lot of authors, I think, they choose a period and a place. And I think that can be a bit restrictive sometimes. It works, mm -hmm. but I think that Joe Crombie, again, is just breaking down those tropes, subverting them, yeah, having yeah. such a mixture. Makes everything his own. And oh, it exactly. It feels very fresh. It in, does. In, in which you wouldn't really expect, would you, with no. uh, a Viking associated yeah, yeah, exactly. which something usually doesn't feel too fresh because yeah. we've seen lots on TV. But I, I love how everything is against each other and it really you know it's like feel like, I feel like I'm playing total war everything's yeah. balanced so well you know and, and anything could happen and most of what we explore in the first book is set in Adua which is the capital city of the union and so we're really at the heart of the politics there that's how we learn a lot about the world as a whole mm. because we're introduced to some major political figures and I think that so Jezel and Glockta are both centred there and they mix with different groups and they're treated as below others but they are needed for certain jobs mm. uh, in the words of peter mclean in his war for the rose throne the right man for the right job and glockta is an inquisitor so in Sp spanish inquisition mm -hmm. another historical reference reference there oh, i forgot the word there i was going to say in inspiration that's the word um it's, but he is needed to gain information from other people in the city and that way he learns a lot that he probably shouldn't know about yeah you, you, and you there's lots of really clever ways that drabble comedy does it where you find out more about the world firstly he's got multi pov so you yeah. find out from you know from logan's point of view about the north and you know a bit more about that and um, the dogma there he's got oh the dogma's so good um and then you've got Glockter walking around, he goes around the libraries and they read about the history. You've got a character who is a magus who was actually there for lots of the history, or supposedly he says he was. Um, so you find out a little bit about stuff there as well, and yeah, uh, yeah through, through character stuff. And there, it is fantasy, it is very low fantasy though, isn't exactly. it? There, yeah, definitely. there are a few ghosts, there's a little bit of magic, nothing really too. No, much it's, it's a bit like it's might seem a bit like a weird reference again but yeah. lord of the rings whereas in the history is a lot more epic than what's actually going on yeah but then dial yeah. down lord of the rings loads and you get the very low fantasy yeah of so it's the silmarillion is like the history of this world yeah again then, it feel, feels like peter mclean's series is very similar to this in in i agree you know aspect of the history but yeah yeah so moving on so next we have after world is action so in the Blade itself, in the rest of the series, which I'm a bit ahead now, um, so I'm on the last segment of Kings as we're recording, yes, are. there are larger scale conflicts, but in the Blade itself it's more small scale, very intimate, still very dangerous, and there's still a variety of ways this comes about. And I think that Joe Crombie is the epitome of using action to further characterization. Mm -hmm. The way the different characters react is masterful. There is a competition, friendly competition, which Jezel is involved in, and the way he reacts to different opponents just really just emphasises who he is. Mm. If he thinks he's winning, he's just so cocky, and he's like, wow, I shouldn't even... Why are they even in the same league as me? Mm. And then if he's losing, he's like, how dare they? I'm Jezel. And it is just so funny. And then you've got Logan and Pharaoh and Colin West, who we learn's got a bit of a temper, and that temper makes him react to conflict Maybe. in a very different way. And Logan, as we said, he's calm, but he also... He is a warrior, so he may have a bit of a... There's a few darker, different sides to, a to few Logan. Darker sides to him as well. And so yeah, I think action is very engaging. You feel mm. like there is danger. You, they may be great warriors, but Logan, he's a fantastic warrior, but he is in danger a lot. And you always feel like he could die at any second. Yeah. And knowing Joe Crombie and how he treats his characters, it do would not surprise you if on any page someone just dies, especially one of your main <laughs> characters. And they do, they really do. Um, yeah, I always think the action that Abercrombie uses, it always reminds me of the first duel in uh, The Princess Bride um, when Wesley is fighting Inigo Montoya yeah. and immediately you see their both of their personalities through that duel, through various things that they do and it never feels forced, it feels like 
you are just watching like a real duel between yeah. two people who are equally as good in, and most, in most ways yeah. you know and um there's not much respect in the in the blade itself no but that <laughs> character development through action is so good and it's so well done and also his action is you know i always love reading like christian cameron who you know talks about the you know the official moves that you know he actually uses in real life as well and that kind of thing and and very practical stuff and um it, i always feel like when i read christian cameron he you know he knows he knows about this action when you read joe abercrombie it's you love it you enjoy it just as much i do anyway and it just feels very different it's it's very much in the middle. It's very brutal and bloody. Yeah. You know, teeth, no, there's no fire. glorification, there's no romance, no romanticism whatsoever um, at all. with war or fighting at all. He's got a very good sense of the the grittiness and the darkness and the brutality. And the characters do some really horrible stuff, but it feels so authentic. You know, it feels very realistic in Logan's words. Um, and I think that the action is one of my favourite aspects of this. Just how you are really thrust out. I feel like they're wearing a GoPro when they're, do <laughs> when they're doing it. I feel like you're watching through the GoPro. Something else comes. Um, something yeah, else exactly. Arose. And you feel something all of the senses in. come into play and each battle, all small scale or large scale, are different to an, to an other, even if they're similar, you know. Mm. Um, and there's something, and they, they, they build to a crescendo by the end. And I think the, the balance is brilliant. Yeah. Um, and it's not like you know these people aren't invincible whatsoever so i not always feel like everything they do affects them you know if they punch someone they've got you know a cut on their hand and that cut that cut stings when they, you know, they're sweating or something like that and things like that that come into play um that just make me enjoy the action even more because you know that it matters you know that yeah, yeah. it counts for something and also we are taught that you can never have too many, too many knives, knives. No. No. it's almost like you got that for this Video. It's my pajama teacher. Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So I think that's everything to talk about in this review. I think now we'll give a summary. Yeah, already. Of, wow. Wow. I think we've been talking for quite a while, probably. probably. But Six um it passes later. so quickly. And so now we'll give basically just a brief summary of each of our thoughts. So the blade itself I I thought was really fantastic. Overall the characters are of course the strength. Mm -hmm. But it's the pros and characters that feed into everything else, isn't it? Plot, we said, it's not the main factor, but that's not to the detriment of the story at all. I thought this is fantastic for all, any book, yet alone a debut. It's it, The Blade itself, when I read it, it's probably my favourite read of 2021 until I read the sequel, but we'll talk about that in a review soon. Your thoughts, Ed? My thoughts, uh, I love it. There we go. So thank you for watching this uh, video of the blade itself. We actually did this because we voted. No, we didn't vote. We put a vote up saying who would you like us to review their I books. I would have voted for Hampton mm -hmm. Crumby. So now we're going to read them all, do a review for each one, and then do a ranking of our favourites. So Yeah, and we'll do a spoiler chat at the end as well. We're hoping to talk to Friends Talking Fantasy, the great podcast, Dylan yeah. and Charles. Um, about the world of the first law as well exactly. very soon and we'll do a chat online um, which everyone can watch which will be very good very good yeah fun. so hope you all look forward to that and i hope you enjoyed this review absolutely if you've but the read... blade itself it's grim it's dark it's hilarious it's brutal <laughs> and it will make you laugh and feel bad for laughing so what's not to love there you go. That What a pitch. That's all you need, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think that if you've read The Blade itself, I hope that this brought some nostalgic memories, talking about a few moments there in a spoiler-free way. And if you've not read The Blade itself... What are you doing with your life? Yeah, why don't you just go and do it? Seriously, I'll, just just go get it. I'll put a link in the description below to the 10th anniversary editions and also the other editions. I think they're that, on um, the Broken Binding. That's exactly they? what I was going to say. It's, on the, it's on the Broken Binding. And... I was very lucky to get this from the Broken Binding with oh wow a signed you've got book that signed. signed oh yeah two Edwards you can never have too many knives all right I thought it said wives at first <laughs> that would be a different saying altogether <laughs> a whole it? different book altogether but there you go I hope you enjoyed and for now stay safe truth and courage truth and courage the brothers Gwyn you have to be realistic about these things click tap pain <laughs> click tap subscribe <laughs> boom <laughs> mic drop the brothers Gwyn truth and courage <laughs>